Hi, my name is Jason Mears and I'm going to take you through the VMware Enterprise Blockchain Database versus Blockchain. So, firstly I'll just go through a couple of uh, typical characteristics of uh, databases. Um, generally, a database is only used internally by a signal organization. Uh, generally, it's centralized and there is a concept of whoever writes last wins so if five people try and write a record to a database the last person that writes the record is going to be the one that overwrites that record and effectively wins um, databases are extremely fast so you could be talking here hundreds of thousands or possibly even millions of transactions per second um, and again one of the other things around it is it's very easy to change records retrospectively so even if it isn't a group of people trying to change the record at the same time you could go back and change a record that was written days weeks or months ago uh, and there wouldn't be anything to stop you changing that record if you had the necessary permissions on that database to modify the record and there wouldn't be a, a simple way of auditing or, or, or keeping on top of that uh, so databases are good for things like ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Good things, uh, good for things like uh, CRM, Customer Relationship Management, and anything where you've got customer records, employee records, stock and inventory, purchases and transactions. And essentially, if I had to summarise it, I'd say they're good for high-speed access to large amounts of data. And then, if you contrast that to a, a typical blockchain, and again, when I say generally, these are all generalisations. Uh, generally used between a consortium or group of organizations. Generally decentralized, multiple copies, no one copy being any more important than the other. And the most votes or consensus wins. So the, the value uh, that gets the most consensus or the most votes from everybody in the consortium will be the one that is written. Um, but generally what comes you know the cost of that is that it's generally slower so we might be talking tens hundreds or maybe even low thousands of transactions per second compared to the database which was hundreds of thousands of transactions maybe even millions of transactions a second but the benefit of this is it's not easily to change records retrospectively without consensus so what is it good for good for sharing live data between multiple organizations and participants it's good for establishing a level of trust between multiple organizations or participants and it's good for things like asset and product tracking so um, uh, I guess things would be supply chain it's good for things like asset transfer ownership of title and deeds it's good for things like certified claims where I can uh, prove that I am who I say that I am I can prove that I have what I say that I have um, those kinds of things um, but we but the the caveat here really is we have lower speed access to smaller amounts of data but with a higher level of confidence and integrity that it hasn't been tampered with or modified so you've probably seen this diagram from from other videos in the series but essentially if you have something like six organizations all working together but each organization has its own separate set of databases and incompatible systems um, that leads to, as it says, incompatible systems and processes, isolated silos of data. And the problems that they can cause are things like a lack of visibility, uh, information only available by request, which can be manual and slow, um, data being manually transferred and duplicated between systems, so inefficient and time consuming. But probably the most important one is things like old data becoming outdated, so it can be stale, error prone, and possibly dangerous. And by dangerous, I mean there could be a, a health implication to that, whether that's a medical record or whether that's the um, supply chain history of a food stuff which has maybe possibly got a bacteria or an infection in it. So that's the typical database deployment. If I was to um, flip that to be a blockchain deployment, what we would have is would be a single blockchain but with multiple copies of that blockchain present in every member of the consortium again no one copy more important than the other but all synced and replicated together so we now have through the use of this blockchain and some kind of distributed application compatible systems and processes and a common set of data to work with benefits of that are is that we have complete visibility information is available to all parties in real time so it's fast as well um, the information is automatically transferred and replicated so it's accurate and verified automatically without anybody having to do anything and because of that it's always up to date so things like accuracy and integrity 
uh, and we minimize the risk and exposure from stale data. So those are the two contrasting views of uh, databases and blockchains. It's not a case of which is better, it's a case of which is more appropriate for a given use case. So just a couple of key points before we finish up this video. Speed. Databases are generally much faster than blockchain solutions. But for a, from a point of view of integrity and validity, blockchain solutions generally have better safeguards around data integrity and data validity than databases do. Centralization. Databases are generally centralized, whereas blockchains are generally decentralized. And trust. Essentially when we talk about blockchain what we're really doing is adding a layer of trust between organizations. So blockchain will give a robust layer of additional trust and security over a typical database solution. If you would like more information on any of this there is a, a, a companion document which we use alongside these videos from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's called the Blockchain Technology Overview. There is a link there and just to say that the relevant sections uh, that relate back to this video are 8 application considerations and 8.1 additional blockchain considerations. So I hope you find some of that useful and thank you very much for your time.